back. This is James again, and I want to do another review on one of the uh, new ASIO products that just got released last week. This is the ASIO MGK L80 RGB mechanical keyboard. This keyboard features brown switches, um, full RGB backlit, ink or rollover. Um, they've made a few upgrades to it, of course, as far as design and aesthetics, and which is actually a great improvement versus the previous models. And um, all in all, I've been using it today for like the last hour, and I'd say it's it's really well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over everything that came in the box. You got the keyboard itself. You got the actual manual for the keyboard, the user guide. Of course, this little happy or trouble pamphlet. It gives you instructions if you're happy. You can you know share with your friends or your online review, whatever, or you can. Call or tech support, email them, or whatever. And as the old tech support, they are great. They are very responsive. They are helpful to your needs. If you have any problems, I've had a couple issues before. Well, actually, one issue was a keyboard before, and within two days, I had a new keyboard out at my house. They are very fast response. They are very nice people. They're very easy to get along with. ASIO is a great company. I don't know if a lot of you know, but they are. They will treat you better as a customer versus other companies that I've dealt with in the past. I'm not going to mention names due to legal reasons and so on and so forth. So let's go on to the review a little further. So now I have also the palm rest, which this is actually magnetic, which is actually really cool. It just basically sits on the keyboard and doesn't move, which is actually really cool. Of course, it pulls right off and the magnets are very strong. It's not going to move unless you, you know, pick it up or move it, whatever. And it also comes with a key puller as well. So, uh, let's go over a few design things. One thing I noticed is that the keys on here are actually, uh, they're more of a coarser texture versus the MGK1, which has like a really smooth, slick texture to them. So, this actually, the keys feel a lot nicer, a lot premium feel to them. Um, they also um, changed the, they made the aluminum actually go over more. It doesn't stop on the edge like the MGK1 does, where it just stops right there and that's it. Um, also, they added a little space here for the you know, space bar for the LED to light up on it. Uh, they've also changed the lighting effect, which I'll show you later, on the keys where actually the whole symbol, every symbol on the key lights up, not just one or two, like for example, like on here, the forward slash lights up and not the question mark. There's a lot of complaints about that on a lot of reviews I've seen online for this thing and various customers, you know, saying, and people saying, well, if they, if they had fixed this, I would actually buy it. So as you listen, and they said, hey, look, we can do that for you guys. They count this keyboard, and, you know, and they've actually improved it quite a bit. So another thing I would like to mention is on the back of here, they have the feet. They've actually made them larger, and they put rubber on both sides of the feet, which I mean is they have rubber here on this side, and then when you flip it out, there's actually rubber here as well, which prevents it from sliding, which, of course, is very helpful and actually works exceptionally well. It does not, you have to really push it to move it. You know, it's not going anywhere. It's there. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, you see me tapping it pretty hard. It's not moving at all. It's, it's very solid. They did a great job with that. Um, also, they, um, of course, they integrated macros. There's now four macro keys on the keyboard now. Of course, you would have to, you know, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. You can put sign up for macros in the keyboard, which personally I don't use, but other people that still use macros for whatever games they're playing or whatever programs they use, they can actually sign those macros and have it set up with this keyboard. And it actually works. I've tried it earlier and I was very amazed with it. It works really well. All right, so palm rest on here and let's go ahead and plug her in and get her going. Alright, so there's the boot up light sequence. Of course, on the L80, they use the brown switches on here, which means they are a lot quieter. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick sound test between the MGK1 RGB and the L80. The MGK1 has got blue switches, which are a lot louder. Listen. Now, here is the L80. it's much quieter so 
This is another good feature. The so only point for this keyboard is it actually has quieter switches. Of course, a lot of people didn't like that. Now, of course, there's also the light for the symbols. As you can see, all the symbols here actually light up appropriately. So everything lights up. Question mark, greater than, less than, parentheses, asterisk, ampersand, you know, percentage, everything lights up on the keyboard. And also the arrows light up as well. So, um, let's see. Also on here, of course, is the brown switches, which is on here. Let me dim this real quick. I can show you. That's actual proof. See, there is the brown switch. This is the cow browns, not the actual cherry browns, which there's actually not really a huge difference between the two, honestly. I've had other keyboards that's actually Corsair and Razer keyboards that had the brown switches in them, and there's not much difference between the Cherry MX and the Kells. It's very, very slightly different. There's not a huge difference in the quality of the keys. Um, let's see, also they made a the volume wheel on here besides like a 4 MGK1. It's a scroll wheel goes up and down and mute button. Whereas here, it's actually mute buttons integrated to the volume wheel. So you turn the volume up, going clockwise, and going counterclockwise turns the volume down. And if you want to mute it, you just Click it once and it mutes the sound, and then click it again and it mutes it. Um, let's see. So we'll go through the color sequences here of the different. Um, sorry, I'm doing this off my phone, so you know I'll get my webcam set up next week and I'll do some more reviews for you guys. So now um, we'll go through the different color modes on the keyboard here. Let me see one second. So we'll start off with the spectrum cycling mode, which is this. So basically what it means is that it cycles through each color, just kind of, basically it fades in and fades out of the colors. So it just kind of fades and gradually goes in each one. You see it's yellow and it goes into green. Um, so there's also the next mode we're going to go to is the splash mode, which means you watch it very closely, you can see the colors kind of trickle across the keyboard. Now, with this mode you can actually do three different variations of this mode. They have a splash mode, a reactive splash mode, and then you can also do a static mode with, without the splash from within this mode, which is actually really neat. So you can go here, and now the splash is stopped, but once you hit a key, it splashes briefly across the keys. See, it stops, do it again, it'll splash again. So that's actually really cool. And also, if you want to do a solid color key without having to go to custom mode and sign each individual key, hit function home. What it'll do is it'll splash out between the different colors. And say you want a solid color like blue, for example, you just hit the function home key on that color, and it'll change it to that color. Of course, you don't want purple, say I want green. So, let's go back, let it cycle through the colors, it's going to white, red, okay, I want green, there we go, now it's green, and it will not do the splash mode while it's in this color, call it static color, it will stay that color, it's actually really cool too. Now, also, let's go to the next mode here, which is wave mode, now this is actually another cool mode it has. It actually waves through the colors going across. Now, of course, you can change the speed, brightness, and direction of the lights going from either left to right or right to left, however you want it. By holding down function and the left arrow key, and the colors will go left to right. Of course, you can do function right arrow key, and it kicks back over to left to right, or have right to left, however you want it. Of course, you can slow that down. As an indicator, once it's bottomed out you know, or maxed out, the little G key will light up. If you turn it, it will blink two or three times to let you know it's reached its limit. Of course, it's really slow right now. It's barely changing color, just very gradually. But now, if you speed it up, it'll go through the colors more frequently. 
Okay, and now another mode it has is, of course, the color marquee mode, which, of course, this is the default mode it comes in once you plug in the keyboard and get it booted up, which is this. And it's basically like a rainbow mode, pretty much. And, of course, you can change the direction of that. And also the brightness. You want to dim it down. Oops, it's all the way off. Or you can brighten it back up a little bit. You can just push and hold it, and it'll brighten the keyboard all the way back up to its brightest color setting. And now we have the next mode we go to is the custom mode, which this is actually you can assign each key for whatever color. Of course, I've already played with it, set a few keys up. I got my escape set to red, my WASD set to green, spacebar to green, and of course my inner key is green, but it's purple. Sorry, and. So basically how you would do this is you would just hold down function and the end key. Select a key you want to change the color. So if you want to change, say, for example, let's do our caps lock key. And of course, what's really cool when it's in this mode, any of the key presses doesn't take effect on the machine. So if you hit like your Windows key, for example, it won't open up the start menu, for example, like watch. I'm going to hit the Windows key here and watch my start menu will not open. But what will happen is it will change the color of the key while it's socking through the colors. So let's say I want to set that to blue. So we'll set it to blue and get this set back to white like it was. Put a function end and we're back at custom mode. And of course what's really cool when you change to different mode, your custom mode does not change which means it stays like it is. So if you go to color marquee mode, spectrum cycling, splash mode, reactive mode, whatever, it will stay that color, it will never change unless you go back and manually change it back yourself. Okay, so if you want to statically set all these to one color or whatever, however you want to set it up, you can. Okay, now the next mode here, the last mode we'll go over is reactive mode. Reactive mode essentially means that the color of the key or the keys will light up when you press them. So you can, you know, press a few keys or you can go through and hit them all like so and they'll light up like that. And of course, you do function and page down, which is the, the reactive mode key. It changes the color. So now the colors will be red. Of course, there is green, yellow, blue, cyan, white, back to red. Of course, there should be a purple somewhere. Let me find it here. Oops, sorry. White, red, green, yellow, blue, purple. There it is. And then, of course, cyan, and then back to white. Okay, now I'm going to do a sound test. I want to show you the difference between the kale blue switches and the kale browns. The kale blue switches has a, they're a more stiffer switch, they are louder, they have a very distinct click to them when you actually use them and I will show you right now. Okay, now here is the kale brown switches which are much quieter. see very quiet very subtle which I think a lot of you will like over the MGK ones blue switches because they are very loud they're very annoying especially if you're trying to be quiet at night or if you you know want to bring a key RGB keyboard to the workplace and use it most places won't let you use an RGB key or a um, blue switch keyboard I've actually had to take this one home I used the office for two days, and my boss is like, that's too annoying, I'm getting a lot of complaints about it, and I had to take it home. So something like this, I could see being able to use in the workplace. It's not as loud. It's actually not much louder than an actual membrane keyboard. It's very, the sound is slightly louder, but not too bad. It's, it's tolerable. So, um, so um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and the macro keyboard, sorry, the macro keys, which I really don't use, but I will do this for you guys. I'll go over the macro keys. So basically, if you want to set a macro key on this keyboard, what you would do is you would go Q, 
hit the keyboard into gaming mode, which is the G key here on the left, and then you would hit the M key, it'll flash to you, okay, you can set up a key sequence for every key. So what you would do is you would hit one of your macro keys at the top here, choose one, hit it, okay, then you would set up a macro. So you can basically say, I, say I love you, and then hit the macro key again, the macro saves. So what I'll do is, I'll open up Microsoft Word here on my computer, and I will show you guys that the macros actually work on here. So, right now, there's nothing on the Word document. But, I'm going to go hit function and my F1 key. Sorry, give me one second here. Or F1, sorry. Just hit F1 and look. It actually typed I love you. Just by hitting one key here, I'll show you again. So, I'll hit my F1 key. And there it is. Just like that. So, yeah. You can set up macros for whatever and, you know, you can set up, like automated responses or whatever keystrokes in game. Um, you can set up for, you know, Adobe Photoshop for sh certain key shortcut sequences or whatever. Um, or whatever else you use. It'll work for that. So, all in all, I mean, this is actually a really great design as you do with the keyboard. It's, um, it's definitely a step up from the previous model, the M2K1. Um, I would highly recommend this keyboard if you're looking for something RGB, mechanical, quieter, has the whole backlit font. Also, with the, it's more stable, more sturdier. It's got more of a premium feel to it. In the MGK1, MGK1 is, is still a DC keyboard, but it's still kind of it, it feels a little flimsy. It's not as solid, I guess you could say. It, it's not as sturdy as I would like. Um, but this guy, this guy feels really, really. You know, there's no. I'm pushing down as it doesn't have any sway. It, it's there, like with the with the wrist rest on the MGK1. When I push it, you can see it's actually. I don't know if you can see it too well, but it's actually got a lot of give and a lot of sway to it, which I don't like that. I wish it was more sturdy like this one. And this one's actually really nice. And of course, you know, if you lift up the keyboard, the palm rest will come off. But while it's attached and you're sliding it, it stays attached to the keyboard. Also, it does not move. I mean, you could try to, I'm sitting here with my fingers trying to pull it back off, and it won't pull off that easy. It's stuck to it unless you actually grab it and pull it. It easily comes right off. But as far as you're using it for gaming or whatever else, it'll it'll stay attached. So, but that concludes my review of the ASIO MGK L80 keyboard. If anyone has any questions or comments, please post down below. Um, please subscribe and like the video. I appreciate it. And thanks for your time. Have a good day. And also, just so you know, I'm a gamer. So you know, game on, game hard, and go for the win.